You guys took. So feel free to share with us after this talk. All right. So, um, oops. Ah, just give me a second. I need to adjust this uh, just a little bit. So, very quickly. Seems that our projector didn't adjust its layout just now properly. <laughs> anyway, it sucks. Yeah. So for uh, tonight, uh, we'll start with taking a look at what has what is new on iPhone 10, and then we'll talk about some design changes, followed by some UI UX guidelines, both from Apple itself officially as well as from the community. Right. So um, in the end, we'll talk about some issues, tips, and tricks that we have uh, found during our adaptation to the iPhone 10. So. Start with what is new. At the first glance, there is this brand new edge to edge screen. Well, not exactly edge to edge. So um, uh, it, it has new size and new shapes. So Apple has given this name of Super Retina Display. And it seems to me that Apple has run out of names. So I'm super, super looking forward. What's the next name of, for the next generation of displays? Right? Jokes aside. So let's take a closer look at this display. So it is 5.8 inch and features a 558 ppi, and which is the highest in its lineup. And then we also realized that something actually is missing. It's the home button. So Apple has replaced the home button with this indicator. It's the tiny little horizontal bar uh, residing at the bottom of the screen. So with it, Apple has introduced it introduce a bunch of new gestures. For example, you can swipe up, and then if you don't let go of your finger, then you will go to the app feature, and if you go all the way up, then you'll go back to the home screen like this. And also, you can switch, if you swipe horizontally, you can switch to the adjacent apps, just like this. Very, very convenient, right? And we also noticed that something else is missing. It's a tiny little area in the center, uh, top center of the screen. So this is called the sensor housing. Inside, inside it uh, is a whole bunch of projectors, cameras, and sensors, basically. So which is quite com which is quite compact. And um, so Apple has also introduced this true depth camera. So which is basically a projector, a front camera, an infrared camera, and a uh, flood illuminator. So with this, we are able to do Face ID. It's a new way of doing authentication, of unlocking your phone, and uh, also give authentication to the apps. So to me, I feel that this new way of authentication is quite smooth because it is purely automatic. The moment I want to unlock my phone, or if I want to log into my app, for example, my banking app, or whatever, so I, I, I don't even need to do anything. It's fully automatic. It's fully transparent. It feels as if there's no authentication at all, but actually it works. So that's my personal feeling, but some people, some, someone else might not think so. Some people might have slight difficulty in using this feature. And of course, I hope that I never had a chance to use this this way. <laughs> All right? So now, <laughs> Uh, True Dex camera also gave us this new feature called Animoji, whereby uh, our facial movements can be tracked properly and projected or replayed on another object. In this case, it's a cute little panda. So we can do more things with it. Um, so Apple has 
improve the AR kit to enable us to do face tracking. So with this, we have four new capabilities to play around. So the first one is the face detection and positional tracking. So basically, you'll be able to know the face as well as the positional, all the positional information. And also, most importantly, um, this, with this AR kit, we are able to get the information of around 50 muscle movements. And with those information, we can do a lot of fancy stuff. And of course, most importantly, it is in real time, so which, is, comes in, which comes in handy. So on top of that, we can also have two images. One is a color image, traditionally, and the other one is the front depth image. This is really interesting because so now we are able to get the depth information. That means we can know which, how, far, how far is uh, each object away from the camera. So if you want to do some further optimization, further rendering, it's very, very helpful. Then, last but not least, um, this AR kit also uses our face as a light probe to understand the lighting condition. So if you want to do something like Animal G, and then you're able to get the lighting information of the environment as well as the face. So if you replay it to some other objects, then it's going to be look very real and blend into the environment naturally. All right. So behind the scene, inside the core, is the new A11 uh, new neural engine. So what, what's the neural engine? Basically, it's a dedicated piece of hardware to run some uh, specific machine learning algorithms, which makes it quite powerful in terms of machine learning. And um, it features the, this dual core design and 600 million operations per second operation, uh, operation speed. Okay. So with that, we are able to uh, play more with, with the SDKs. So we can do augmented reality. It's been further enhanced in iOS 11. And we can do machine learning as well as advanced graphics processing. So we are not going to get too deep into these topics. And there's a whole bunch of topics and resources online. So if you are interested, you can go read them up. Right. So this is a complete list from the WWDC, one of these from the Apple Special Events. Right. So let's take a look at some key design changes. So this should be something that we are more interested in. So uh, first thing, the design set. So now all the design sets on iPhone 10 is using 3x designs. So if you've been using 3x, then you don't need to do anything special. But moving forward, Apple suggests us to use vector-based sets, for example, PDF. Yeah. So let's say in the future Apple introduces some other devices with 4x or 5x, then you don't need to do anything special, right? So this is Apple's suggestion, and it also gave us a few examples, uh, example sets for us to. Uh, download and, and explore, right? So let's take a closer look at the screen. So basically, it's 375 point width and uh, 812 points in height. And if rendered in 3x, it will be this amount of pixels. And um, compared to the 4.7 inch, it is 145 points taller, which is 20%, around 20% taller, right? So um, we design for the iPhone 10. So definitely, you can uh, put more stuff in one scroll. Right? So let's take a look at the top sensor housing. It um, it seems that its corner radius is not cropped. It's not cropped out of no reason. There seems to be some artistic principles behind it. So of course. Uh, it is still a compromise, right? It's still not a perfect solution, but this is definitely not the easiest solution Apple has made. One easier solution would be, instead of having this top notch, they can just put one additional uh, horizontal black border on top of the display. So uh, they can put all the sensors in the additional border, top border, but they didn't. So obviously they did this for a reason. So there's a whole lot of debates and um, talk and uh, conversations online. So uh, I'm not an artistic person, so I'm not going to do, talk too much about it. So as developers, when we are doing um, the, uh, adapting the layout of iPhone 10, we care more about the specific metrics. So here it is, the cheat sheet. So 
looking at it, we realize that there is a 44-point 44, 44 status bar followed by a 97% navigation bar. And uh, at the bottom, you have a 49-point tab bar and 34-point home indicator. So uh, as developers, we need to keep this in mind because uh, when we develop it, we need to uh, we need to measure against the designs. But this is only for debugging purposes. We should never hard code those values because we never know in the future what new metrics or what new numbers will be there, right? So never use this uh, magic numbers in your code. Only for debugging purposes. All right. So now let's take a look at the system UI, and uh, it seems that. All the system UIs automatically adjust itself in iPhone 10 without you doing anything. For example, in the case of navigation bar, you can see that the background will basically flood all the way to the edge of the screen, right? And the same goes for the bottom uh, tab bars. So you don't need to do anything. And for the horizontal content, Apple has done a lot, lot, a lot, and a lot of automatic inset. For example, in the case of table view. Um, the, the, the content is automatically inside, away from the edge of the screen. And uh, Apple has introduced this safe area. This is the most important topic that we'd like to talk about today. And uh, let's take a look. So safe area, defined by Apple, is the portion of the view that will not be covered by any of the bars or uh, hardwares. So you are completely safe if you lay out your stuff inside it, right? So Let's, let's look at the screen. So if you don't do anything, your safe area will be defined as the entire screen. And if you have, you have a status bar, then the safe area will be, will be shrinked to the bottom a little bit. And if you have a navigation bar, then it's going to be uh, shrinking further. And you have, if you have a tab bar, in the case of the last screenshot, your safe area will be shrinked from the bottom edge. Right? So in the case of iPhone 10, the safe area comes even more handy. So it automatically avoids all those uh, areas that may get hidden, right? For example, the bottom home indicator and the uh, center housing on the top. So, uh, and this is also goes, this also uh, holds in the in, in the case of horizontal layout. So, uh, your view will be automatically inset from the edge of the screen if you are using safe area, right? And also. We have the good old layout margin, which now also respects safe area layout. So if you've been using layout margins, so then you should be in good shape, right? So we'll get back to safe area in just a bit. Uh, we'll uh, talk more about it. So, but before that, I would like to share with you a few UI UX guidelines based on the changes we have seen just now. And a lot of them are from Apple itself, and also some are from the community, right? So. The first suggestion would be, whenever possible, we should always provide a full screen experience. What do I mean? So, uh, of course, the easiest way to adapt your app to iPhone 10 is to put a black border at the bottom and top of your screen. Then you are done, right? You are safe to go. But this is strongly, this is yeah, uh, strongly discouraged because iPhone 10 is there to to provide an immersive and full screen experiences. And if your app is um, uh, will somehow look on the left, then it might look annoying to some of the users, right? So, always provide a full screen experience. But at the same time, bear in mind, um, don't, don't let the rounded corners or the sensor housing block some of your important controls, right? So, next, um, it's called inset, only when needed. So, uh, this is a screenshot from the app that I'm working on, uh, which is Shopee. So uh, basically, it's an online e-commerce platform uh, in Greater Southeast Asia. Yeah, we started in 2015, and it's one of the fastest growing e-commerce platforms in the region. But anyway, uh, this is our app. And uh, so we have basically two screenshots here. The one on the left is a vertically scrollable, uh, infinite scrollable um, collection view. And uh, so in this case, it is recommended that um, you should extend your view all the way to the bottom. Even if it's hidden by the home indicator, it's hidden behind the home indicator, it's completely fine. The reason being that 
first thing, user can scroll, right? So the common, common hidden can be brought up if, you, if user continue to scroll. And the second reason is that the home indicator doesn't recognize click events. So even if the user click at the bottom row, the user will still be able to get the correct response from your app without interfered by the scroll indicator. So which is fine. Um, the user will see a continuous movement of your content. So in another case, just take a look at the right hand side. So we have some custom bottom uh, toolbars, or sometimes it will be a just it will just be a very big submit button, right? <coughs> so in this case, you should never hit, you should never hide those custom views behind the home indicator because those buttons are not scrollable. They are fixed at the bottom, and we don't want to block any uh, important message, right? So that's this rule. And the next suggestion is. If you are reusing some of your design artworks, bear in mind that they may be cropped in different sizes of a screen. So uh, they may be cropped, or they may have black borders on two sides, or maybe on top and bottom. So you should be really, really careful with that. And if you have to clip any content, make sure the content being clipped is the irrelevant details. Make sure your main content, your content of interest, is always there in the screen. Right? So the next suggestion would be be mindful of status bar. So if you look at the status bar, then I will realize that the height doesn't change anymore. So I say in the, in the previous case, if the user is maybe talking on the phone, or maybe if the user has enabled the, uh, the uh, hot, personal hotspot, then your status bar height may change, but this is no longer the case. Instead, the color will change. Right? So if you are doing some custom background color behind the status bar, then you should take extra care because your custom color may conflict with the system's background color. So make sure you design your, your background color uh, in a way that looks nice, even if the background color of the status bar changed. Right? So although the height is fixed, but like I said just now, we shouldn't assume this is the truth in the future. So, yeah, and also hiding the status bar is discouraged because in iPhone 10 we now have a very long screen, so we have less necessity to hide the status bar anymore, right? You have the more content to show, and if you cannot fit everything, then maybe you can employ a scroll view of sorts, right? And of course, it's also a good behavior to show the time, show the battery, and show the whatever information in the status bar to the user. So user can always refer to those informations as and when the user want, right? So that would be a good experience. So the next suggestion, move controls inside safe area. So let's say you have a control all around your edges. So uh, don't do this because the content of the control may be uh, hidden uh, by the wrong corners and yeah. So make sure you respect this area, and we'll get to that in just a minute. So also, next one, be symmetrical. So same example. If you look at this, you'll notice that the left, the buttons on the left have different distances from the left edge on the top screenshot and the bottom screenshot, right? So this design will undermine people's ability to build muscle memories and will confuse people. So your users, your wonderful user app, Maybe they have to rotate the phone to a specific angle to, to use their app. So instead, what you can do is this. Just make it symmetrical. So no matter how the user rotates the phone, your, all your controls have a fixed exact the same distance from the edge of the phone, So which is very convenient for the users. Right? Next, leave the home indicator alone. Don't do anything about it. Right? So don't put any adornments such as background colors, shapes, bezels, or directional, directional text to draw attention. So this home indicator can do all the things itself. So it's white in dark background, and it's, uh, it's dark in white background, vice versa. Right? So just leave it alone. And also, excuse me, do not add any uh, gesture recognizers at the bottom of your screen because that might go conflict with the 
communicator such as your recognizer, right? So, next, do not do any heavy lifting when app will resign active or when app resigns active. So, with the, all the new gestures brought by the home indicator, the users can now switch back and forth, uh, switch to the home screen and go back very quickly. And now, we also have this um, control center and notification center, which can be uh, brought up by scrolling from the top of your screen. So your user will, so you will respect, so you will expect a lot of resign actives in your app. So don't do any heavy lifting because the user may just come back anytime, right? So be careful when you design features under this kind of scenarios. Next, reference authentication, reference authentication methods accurately. So because on the iPhone 10, we now have this face ID. So the face ID and the touch ID, the previous version, is mutually exclusive. So bear in mind that um, when you are designing authentication um, functionalities, uh, make sure you check all those availability properly, right? And if you support one, it's best that you support the other. And next, allow auto-heading of home indicator sparingly. So just now uh, we talked about the such suggestion whereby we shouldn't add any gesture recognizers at the bottom of the screen. But what if my app, I want to create some immersive experiences. I really want, and I really don't want the home indicator to distract the user's attention. So can I do that? Yes, you can. So there are two ways. One is that you can turn on edge protection. Uh, so basically it works like this. So user needs two scrolls to, um, to, to access the home screen. Basically, the first row will make the home indicator obvious, and the second scroll, second scroll from the bottom will basically bring the user to home. Yeah. And there's another thing you can do, which is the auto hide of home indicator. And um, so if you do this, if you turn this on, then the home indicator will be automatically hidden completely if the user haven't been interacting with the screen. And if a user touch the screen again, then the home indicator will show again, right? So this is the hiding. And how to do that is very simple. So basically, you need to override two methods in your view controller. They're called preferred screen edges deferring system gestures. This is the edge protection. And the second one will be prefers home indicator auto hidden, right? So that you can just in, uh, just return whatever value you want. And if you want to update the reconfiguration, you can just call this set needs update, blah, blah, blah. So the system will basically involve those configurations again to get the updated value, right? So although this is possible, but still bear in mind that we should use always use this sparingly. So because this user experience is different from all the other apps, so we don't want to confuse the user and then we don't want to add more memory tasks to the user, right? So always use this sparingly. All right, so now let's talk about some issues um, as well as some tips and tricks that we have discovered when we are doing our apps. And um, so started by just click the running button in the Xcode. Then we realize this, right? So this is our app, Shopee. And um, the moment we run it in the latest Xcode, then we realize this. The app is not running in the full screen. There are indeed um, black borders on top and back, uh, on the bottom. So how do we fix that? Very easy. First, build against iOS 11 SDK. Second, use launch storyboard. And there we go, right? So some people might think that this might be Apple's approach to force everybody to use the latest SDK. But uh, nonetheless, this, is, this should be something we need to do because uh, we should always adapt to the latest technology so that our users can always enjoy all the new functionalities of the apps, right? So uh, in our company, we actually started doing all of these weeks before the launch of iPhone X. So the moment iPhone X is launched, then everybody is able to use the latest the full screen, the immersive experience on their new phones, right? So, we have to launch our app, and the second thing we notice is that 
hmm, something doesn't, still doesn't look right. So you notice on the left, we actually, uh, this is the product page whereby we have a customized toolbar at the bottom. So check now, add to cart. And the add to cart text is hidden by the home indicator. And on the right hand side is our cart page. So basically, uh, we have some very important message, it's the coins message. Uh, that is hidden. So obviously, this is very annoying to our users. So how can we do that? And it turns out that the solution is kind of universal for this kind of problems. So the solution is using safe area. So we've mentioned this twice just now. So now let's take a closer look at how it works and how it works with the other views that we have, right? So um, some of the some of the ideas is uh, adapted from is referenced from this uh, blog post and it's kind of a good read up. So if you're interested, you can just take a look. But anyway, let's take a look. Starting with UI views. So how does safe area work with UI view? A simple example will be this. For example, we have two UI labels, one on top and one on bottom, and uh, each of them is attached to the very edge of its super view, just like this. Very simple. So then you realize that something's wrong because all your text is running too much, right? So the sensor housing is hidden some, and the home indicator is hidden some. It's almost at the borderline. So how can we do that? Then it turns out that we can do it in two ways. So safe area gives us two properties. One is called uh, safe, safe area insets. OK, let me just go back to these slides. So one is called uh, safe area insets, and one is called safe area layout guide. The f you can reference the first one if you are doing manual calculation. And you can reference the second one if you are using auto layout. Right? Let's go back. OK, so how do we solve this? So let's take a look at one example of using manual calculation. So in the case of the top label, what we can do is when we are doing layout, then we can access the views property named safe area insects. So uh, we can attach the x to the safe area insects left, and the y attach it to the safe area insects top. And then we can calculate the width with respect to safe area, right? You just manually deduct all the insects, and then we do the fixed height, right? So what does it look in the case of auto layout? It's actually very simple. So the view has a property safe area layout guide. It has four anchors. What you can do is just you attach the four anchors of your custom view to the anchors of those uh, safe area layout guide, like this. Of course, in this case, we still set the height to be a fixed value, right? So then it will look something like this. So you notice that the labels will be inside property and with respect to the safe area. And you also notice something is wrong because you see this orange orange background color, right? They are not automatically uh, extended to the very bottom. And this is not an immersive experience. And we certainly don't want this kind of experience. So how can we do it? How can we make the orange color extend all the way to the bottom while we still keep the text like this intact? So uh, one way to do this, of course, is firstly, we put the labels into two container views, right? We put our container view at the top and put a container view at the bottom, and we put the labels inside. Then, we'll, the container view will be attached to the super view's edges, right? And then, the labels will be attached to the container view's edges, sorry, to the container view's safe area, right? So, you can do that by simply doing the first line. So the same layout layout guide, it turns out it has a layout frame. So you can just set a label frame to be that frame, then you're done. Or if you want to, to be more explicit, if you want to do more, um, make our code more understandable, uh, you can uh, use the bottom approach, they are equivalent. Right? So this is as good as we use the auto layout to attach the anchors of your four edges. So if you do that, then it'll be done. So now you see this. Right. Okay, now let's take a look at the safe area with UI view controller. 
what is the new change in the UI view controller? So it turns out the UI view controller now have a new property with the name of additional safe area insects. So what does that mean? It is a property for you to tell the system, say, hey, I have my own uh, UI views. Then I want to exclude my views from the safe area. Right? For example, you have a custom uh, bottom tab bar. Or you may have some uh, custom headers. Then you want to exclude those. Uh, you don't want safe area to contain these, especially when you are writing some frameworks for other people. Right? So just imagine when other people they are using your views, they can just call the safe area. They can just lay out according to the safe area because the safe area insights has been modified by you using the additional safe area uh, insights. Right? And um, of course, if you set it, then uh, corresponding delegates will be triggered. In, in the view case, you will be safe area insights state change. And in the view controller, you will be view safe area insights state change. So if you are interested, or if you want to perform something on um, change of this property, then you should implement those methods, or rather, you should override this method in your views of your controllers. Right? So, how about scroll view? So scroll view is, may seem problematic, but actually the solution is quite simple. All you need to do is nothing, right? So if you do nothing, in this case, this scroll view is attached to the four edges of the screen. So without any insights, without any uh, special handling. So it just works. Right? So this is because of this property at the very bottom. The name is quite long, so it's called Content Insight Adjustment Behavior. This property is here to replace the good old automatically adjust for the insights, the one you see on the top. So that one has been deprecated in favor of the new problem. So how, what does this do? This is to um, help you to specify how can the system help you to automatically adjust the insights with respect to safe area. Right? So it has four possible values. You can say never. So in this case, the system will never do anything for you. Then uh, you're on your own. So in this case, you don't see any insights. Then you can say scrollable indexes. So in this case, this scroll view is vertically scrollable because its content size is greater than its frame, right? So, and uh, of course, sometimes if, if you if you say uh, if you make this scroll view uh, vertically scrollable, always vertically scrollable, then it's also going to set the insect in the scrollable area. In the scrollable index, excuse me, right? So you can also say always. So no matter what your condition is, no matter uh, what content you have, then it always the system always add the safe area insights for you. And there comes this slightly interesting one, which is called automatic. So how is it automatically done? Okay, firstly, it's designed more for compatibility or backward compatibility. And um, most of the case is the same as scrollable axis, but identical to always for some conditions. For example, if the legacy property is enabled, right? The deprecated, the deprecated property is enabled, then it's going to be always. And uh, if your scroll view horizontal axis is scrollable and has non-zero safe areas. And of course, if your view controller is a child of navigation or tab controller, tab bar controller. And this is inferred from Apple's documentation. So if you want to, if you want more insights, you can check this, right? So this automatic behavior sadly has some side effects, or rather has some additional animation effects. For example, so this is our app, so the settings page. So, okay, this is start. Yeah. So the moment you push a new rule controller with a scroll view, and if your behavior is set to automatic, then you notice that the scroll view is somehow have an additional insight. And as the animation goes, the scroll view is scrolling up to cancel the additional insight. 
See, as the animation goes, my scroll wheel is going, is, is push, is pushing out, it's being pushed out, right? So, um, I mean, this shouldn't, I mean, uh, this may not be a side effect. You may want it, right? So just go ahead and talk to your designer to see whether you want to do this behavior. But if you don't, so you can just cancel it by setting this property. Setting this property in this instance, you can just say uh, US draw you about appearance dot uh, content adjustment behavior equals to never. Right? So all your scroll wheels will be excluded from this behavior. And, but bear in mind that there's also a side effect whereby system pages will be affected. For example, you may have image picker, the system implemented image picker, and you may, have the, the, you may use the uh, view controller for sending emails. Right? So all of those will be affected. So if you've been using this, then you cannot set the universal, the shared appearance because everything will be affected and then you have totally no control and you have totally no access to the system scroll view, right? So another way to solve the problem is but just use, just set this property properly on every instance before it's presented, right? So that way you can just uh, save the system's menu, uh, save the system UIs from being affected. And um, also this, uh, New property is introduced, which is called adjusted content insights. So, how does this work? So, uh, this is a new property, and actually, let's do an experiment on how this works. So, let's say we have a uh, scroll view, right? At the bottom, it has a tag bar, and um, at the top, it has a navigation bar. Quite standard system UIs. Then, let's print out the values. So, on iOS 10, if I print out the content insight, then that's the correct value, right? You have top 64, bottom 49, which is uh, added by the system, which is correct. And by now, iOS 11, we realize they are all zero. And but the adjusted content insight is the correct value. So, yeah. So that means the system, after it has automatically adjusted, it changed this property so that you can read. And let's add a 10 point to all the content inside, top, bottom, left, and right. So what's the result? On iOS 10, it look as expected. But on iOS 11, the content inside is the one we set just now. And uh, the adjusted content inside will be this, right? So uh, this is some new behavior. So that means the actual scroll view on iOS 11 is the adjusted content inset. So you might not, you might not, you, you shouldn't access the content inset to derive, the, to, to, to retrieve the correct value. But the problem comes where you want, you need to be backward compatible. That means you need to um, add, uh, maybe some of your logic is reading this property and you need to handle it properly. So how can you do that? So uh, one way to do that is you can just use a version check, right? And um, you, you, you can say, if it's iOS 10, then you do something. If iOS 11, you do something. And that's most of the case. How, that's how you resolve the compatibility issue in most of the cases. But in this case, uh, you can do something else, which is this. So you can just turn off the adjustment behavior and on iOS 11 so that you can safely access the content inset without any further issues. That is, that is when you don't want the automatic adjustment. Right. Another thing that we notice is that uh, the scroll view static method, scroll view deep scroll, will be caught if you change the frame of a scroll view. So you should take special uh, pay, pay special attention to this if you have any logics relying on each other. So, for example, if your scroll view deep scroll, sorry, if your frame change, uh, maybe uh, you want to you want to do something that. Uh, will trigger, okay, so maybe uh, let me put it this way. In the scroll view deep scroll, then you trigger something that changes the frame. And when the frame is changed, you know, that it's called again. So you might end up in dead box in this way. So just be careful with this. And, okay, so let's take about 
let's uh, talk about how safe area works with table view. So actually months before iPhone, iPhone 10 releases, so there's some smart guy came up with some really creative solutions. So one guy <laughs> is believed to solve the problem, right? So <laughs> should the UI table view behave like this on the iPhone 10? And how about the scroll indicators? You know, the tiny little bar on the right indicating your scroll offset. So should it look like this? Right? There's some guy apparently has found a solution, right? So can you, the question is, can you do this or should you do this? Right? So it turns out that what we need to do is nothing. <laughs> okay. So Actually, if you don't do anything, the table view will behave totally respecting uh, the uh, safe areas. So in this case, this, table, this particular table view is attached to the four edges of the screen, and uh, we didn't do anything. So the header has a red, the header's content view has a red background color, and the cell's background view has a white background color. So, Judging from the color's distribution, then you realize that um, the content view of the cells as well as the header are automatically inset from the edge of the screen using, uh, uh, using, excuse me, using the uh, thick area, right? So that is because, um, right? So uh, then you also notice that the background the background of the content view is the background color is not extended to the edge of the screen, right? So it changes together with your content view. That's just because the content view is inside. So if you want the colors to extend all the way edge to edge, then you should set the background view's background color, right? So it turns out that the UI table view have this new pro new property is called. Uh, insights come from views to save area and by default it's turned on. That, that is why we didn't do anything and then we saw the, the picture just now. So if you turn it off, then you'll see something like this. So as if there's probably no, uh, no insights at all, right? So that's the case of table view. Then another behavior change that we realized is the uh, estimated height default value have changed. So table views have a few estimated heights, uh, namely estimated row height, estimated section foot height, and estimated um, section header height. So previously, before iOS 11, their default value is disabled, right? So if you don't set this, then it's disabled. So starting with iOS 11, these values by default is automatic if you don't do anything. What does automatic mean? That means um, the height of the view is automatically measured by the system. All you need to do is you provide enough information for the system to calculate your view's height. That's all you need to do. But the drawback of this, or a side effect, is that the reload of your table views, if you set to automatic, the reload is not going to be synchronized. Rather, it's going to be quite asynchronous. And you have no idea when the reloading of a table view is done. The system is doing a few rounds of layouts and measurements under the hood in the background. So if you have the code of these two lines, for example, I want, to my, I want my table view to reload data, and then at the next line, I want my uh, table view to scroll to the bottom then you might be in trouble because the moment your second line is triggered, the moment you want to scroll to the very bottom, your table view may not be there. The reload may not finish at all. Right? So one use case of this is in the case of a chat page, for example. Um, every time the user sends a new message, right? so I insert one row in a table view, which is the list of the messages, and after I insert a message, I immediately want to scroll to the bottom because I want user to see the latest information. So if I turn the uh, estimates, if I don't do anything to the estimates, then it might fail due to the automatic behavior. So the way we solve the problem is the three lines above. 
and it turns out that you don't need to do any version checking. So on the previous iOS versions, iOS 10 and below, you set to zero to disable the automatic estimates. And on iOS 11, you set to zero also to disable it. But the problem is you need to set it explicitly like this. Right? So if you have any logics relying on the immediate completion of the reloading of table view, then you need to take extra care of this. Right? So how about collection view? It turns out collection view is quite similar to table view, except the fact that it doesn't respect your safe area by default. And there's there's little you can do. So the only way to, to make your uh, collection view cell respect your safe area is to manually do it from the self level or from your uh, reusable headers level, right? Just make sure they respect the safe area of their super view. And uh, on the collection view, uh, there is a new property in the flow layout class, which is called section inset reference. So the section can be referenced from content inset, safe area, or layout margins. So some quick example. So this is when the reference is referencing from content inset um, of the entire view. And this is from the safe area. And this is from the layout margins of the views. right? So this is the behavior of the collection view. Right? So that's roughly about it. And some final notes. So first thing, do not assume those behaviors. Do not assume or rely on hard code values. Only use them for debugging purposes. And also, all the solutions we have seen just now is case by case. And may or may not be applicable to your application. So just be careful of the side effects if you want to apply to any, right? Then third thing is some of those findings are based on experiments and uh, which is keep improving, keep iterating, and also some of the APIs and system behaviors will improve. So maybe tomorrow there will be some uh, better solutions or more elegant ones. So. That's why we need to stay connected and stay updated and share and learn from the community, right? And speaking of stay connected, our company <laughs> is still hiring. <laughs> yeah. So if you are interested in uh, what we are building, what we are doing, and how we do our job, and uh, feel free to talk with us. So I'm with the iOS team, and our team is over there. So just as I look, ready, guys. <laughs> Right, so if you want to know about it, so uh, welcome to talk to us or uh, talk to our HR Dora over there. Yep, so, um, and also check out these references. So um, I referred uh, some ideas from these articles. They are, good, they are some, quite some good reads. And, and this. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so any questions? Questions about the topics or about any any other questions in general? Okay, I just like to ask, right? I mean, for your own internet apps like your Shopee and all this, you all have uh, you all, like really go through manually go through every screen and decide I should move this, I should adjust that, or there's some thing that you did such that uh, it works well in most cases? Uh, um, well, um, like I mentioned just now, right? So um, if you are using auto layout, or if you are using the system's controls, for example, the system's navigation bar or toolbar, then you're in good shape. You don't need to do any, anything special, right? And the thing is, you need to pay special attention for the customized views, the views that you use uh, calculation in manually layout, right? So, and of course, the views that have a lot of interactions may have changed, right? Because the JSON net recognizers uh, may uh, change according to how the views are laid out. So, yeah. So when we were adapting our app to iPhone 10, we basically went through all the pages to verify that all of them uh, are able to uh, produce a correct layout for our user to use. 
and we adjust accordingly. to the new side as well as the behavior. What I've noticed is, especially when you try to add it to like navigation controllers or something like that, sometimes it will just not show up or things like, it won't show up in a bar, but I can or things like that. Right. So just wondering. So we do notice some abnormal behavior with the search bar. So uh, I think one cause of this is because all the navigation items are now using auto layout, right? So, uh, internally, Apple is using auto layout to lay out all the bar button items and search bars and whatever. Um, so Apple's suggestion of this is if we want to put manual or uh, custom views on the navigation bars, we should provide sufficient information of the sizing. Right? That means within your custom view on the navigation bar, uh, you should attach your view. Your views should be well defined in terms of width and height. And uh, the edges of the view should attach to your sub-view or container view's edges so that when the navigation bar uh, lay out your views, it can be, uh, it can be laid out properly. So that's Apple's suggestion. And uh, we actually do, did some in, uh, inspection on the navigation bar. Then we realized that uh, actually, yes, it's, uh, indeed it's using auto layout. And some of the navigation items, sorry, the bar button items is actually using stack view so they are basically stacking each other uh, side by side, something like that. So um, one way to fix the layout issue was to change the properties of the stack views. But those are internal APIs, and we shouldn't assume that the stack views is the solution in the future, right? So Apple can uh, basically internally change the implementation. So we, sh we should never do this. This is only for exploration. So. The, the way we solve the search bar is uh, we, so one way we did was we used the UI search bar, uh, sorry, uh, UI search controller. So we don't manually set the title view of the navigation bar to my search bar. Instead, we create this UI search controller and then we just set it to the navigation item. Uh, if I remember correctly, yes. So then, then the layout issues can be solved. Yeah. And Instead of doing this, we also did one more exploration, which also worked. Is um, so F, because Apple suggested us to provide sizing information. So we noticed the navigation, sorry, we noticed the search bar size is incorrect. So we actually provided size information. We changed the intrinsic content size. So that would be used in the auto layout, and that also did work. Um, but that uh, I don't think is the suggested solution. The correct, I mean the Recommended we should use UI search controller. Yes. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. We need to use the mic. Uh, can you use it? So everyone, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, is it possible? I mean, you mentioned there's like a safe area in that container. Right? Yes. Yes. So let's say my navigation bar is red, then my tab bar is white. So yes. how do I, like, is it possible to have different colors for the non-safe areas? Like for the status bar and the home indicator as well? Uh, yes, so actually you can adjust the background color of the, the navigation bar and tab bar. So okay. it's actually customizable and they have the APIs for you to, to do your configuration. Oh, so they're separate? Because um, I'm, I'm not just basing it on the slides that you were showing. The, you mean the top and bottom are separate? Yes, they are separate. Okay. Mm. okay. They're independent of each other. Yeah. Any more questions? And there additional thing to your question regarding the search bar. One, another thing we do is we just implement the navigation bar ourselves. <laughs> like, don't use the Apple navigation bar. <laughs> so we just implemented ourselves via yeah, that that usually always works. So. Yeah. If you have your own custom transitions or if you have own uh, fancy for animations, then you can implement those your own from your own versions. But uh, just in case in the future, right, Apple has introduced a bigger notch on the top, <laughs> then you should, you will adjust. <laughs>
Yeah, then you need to do further adjustments. But if you if you are just using the system one, then you should be in good shape. Yeah, if you are respecting this area. Uh, and uh, with the introduction of iOS 11, we have a few new behaviors on uh, the UI navigation controller. So we have the marked titles, right? So uh, you can turn that on by just assigning a single pool property so that uh, you have the bigger title. And as you scroll, the bigger title can be shrinked to the normal title. And it's quite a good behavior. I mean, it's, it's quite a good experience. And uh, you can talk to your designers to see how you can adapt to this new design. All right. Does so anyone no more questions? Uh, no worries. You guys can approach us later on. With that, thank you for listening. Let's give this a round of applause.